What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today, I have your WWE Royal Rumble 2022 full show review and results for you guys. You guys should pretty much know how these videos work nowadays. You know, I pretty much just run through the entire card, breaking down all of the action taking place at the show and letting you guys know exactly what took place at Royal Rumble, giving you my own thoughts, analysis, you know, opinions on every single thing that took place from the attires to the entrances to the moments to the matches, where we go from here, what I expect, was I disappointed, was I thrilled. We break all those things down here on the channel and in these videos. So with all that being said, man, let's dive into Royal Rumble 2022 and take a look at everything that took place. Now, I was pretty excited for this show coming, coming in. It's the Royal Rumble, right? Not a lot to get excited for. It's the Royal Rumble. You don't really have to look too much into it. You don't have to dissect it that much. Somebody could alter the whole trajectory of their career based on tonight's action. So it was an exciting time. I was definitely thrilled for it, but would it live up to the hype? Would it be a great Royal Rumble? Would it fall flat on its face? We don't know until we dive into the show, man. So with all that being said, let's dive into Royal Rumble 2022 and describe everything that took place. Was the show shitty? Was it great? Was it somewhere in between? Let's find out right now. So starting off our main show, guys, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So starting off our main show, man, we had Seth Rollins going up to the Blue Universal Championship with Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins broke out the old shield gear, had the had the theme song, had the gear, had the entrance through the crowd. It was a really crazy moment. It was insane. It was a really great entrance, a little pop there. Everybody was going nuts. I popped. It was a very cool moment indeed. And this matchup slapped, man. It was a really great bar burner. It was a little bit different than their typical matches, man. I thought it'd be a real slow burn. They brought it immediately, man. I mean, we had big moves early. We saw sling blades and dives to the outside. Really great matchup. Very physical. And at the end of the day, I, I thought this thing was going to go back and forth, man. It was very, very crazy how these guys went back and forth. Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins doing one here. Classic stuff. We I, I could have swore I heard a We Want Moxley chant at one point, and I'm not going to lie to you. At one point, I thought we might get him, but of course, that wasn't going to take place. But Roman Reigns locks in the guillotine late in this thing, and uh, Seth Rollins is pleading and pleading and trying to get to the ropes, and he gets like one step away. Little Nate holds up his arm for, for the submission, and then he grabs the ropes, and Roman keeps holding on. He keeps holding on. Little Nate is like, break the hold. One, two. Counts to five, and the match is over, so Roman Reigns loses, but by DQ. So Seth Rollins is your winner, but it was by DQ, and so they're going to continue this feud, man. I really don't... Th this kind of shook up my whole perspective for the Rumble. I don't know where the hell we're going with it now. I don't know what they're going to do for the Royal Rumble for the Men's Rumble. I don't know what they want for WrestleMania. I guess we're just going to have to play it by ear. Does this line up Seth Rollins to potentially win the Rumble later tonight? I mean, I don't know what they're thinking now. With that sort of conclusion we had here, I don't know where we're going for Mania. Honestly, like, it kind of baffled me a little bit, but I hope that we get some some things answered here, but I liked how it kind of left me clinging to what the hell's next, you know? It kind of left me bamboozled, if you will, so that was pretty cool for sure, and yeah, I mean, I enjoyed the match a lot. I didn't like the swerve finish. It was just kind of a no contest. After the match, Roman also beat his ass with a chair and beat him down good. I didn't know if somebody was going to come out or what the case was, but Roman Reigns is still your champion, and this has thrown me for a loop. I can't wait to see what happens, but Rollins does come up short, and it was sick as hell to see him in the classic Shield gear. And next up, ladies and gentlemen, it was our Women's Royal Rumble match. So number one was Sasha Banks. Now, I did not expect Sasha Banks to be the number one entrant. I don't even... She did confirm it on, what, Friday Night Smackdown or something like that, but I didn't expect her to draw number one unless that was just the segment. But number two was Malik. That was a very big shocker. Did not expect to see Melina in this Rumble, but it was cool to see her, but she didn't last very long, man. She did not last very long whatsoever. She was eliminated almost immediately, but number three was Tamina, and I vomited a little. Nah, it's just a shout out to JD from New York there, but number three was Tamina. Number four was Kelly Kelly, and she was eliminated pretty cool by Sasha. Like, she did this, like, handspring on the thing, on, like, the apron, and she got kicked and landed flat on her face on the outside by Sasha. It was a really cool elimination. Number five was Aaliyah. Number six was Liv Morgan. I had her as a dark horse in this thing. Was proud to see her in it for so long. She had a nice top rope shotgun drop kick to Tamina. Better than anything Tamina's done in her career. Out comes number seven, Zelina Vega and she eliminates Sasha Banks. This was a big shocker to me. I did not expect Zelina Vega to eliminate Sasha Banks. That actually blew my mind, but I guess maybe Sasha still hurt or something, but that was a shocker. Number eight would come in ladies and gentlemen and it would be the night's favorite, right? It would be Bianca Belair. She came out. She did fantastic in this thing. Number nine was Dana Brooke. Number ten, Michelle cool. Number 11 was Sonya Deville, but she did not get in the ring. She stayed on commentary. Number 12 was none other than Natalya, if watching paint dry was a wrestler. Number 13 was Cameron. She was eliminated by Sonya Deville. And then number 14 was the ta former tag team partner of Cameron in Naomi. The Funkadactyls making a reunion here. She was not sporting the green. She was in the purple, but Naomi eliminates Sonya, so repay for Cameron there. Number 15 was Carmella. She didn't even get in the ring. She was out there at commentary, sucking it all 
off with freaking Corey Graves. Number 16 was another fan favorite and another strong performance. It was Rhea Ripley, who, would you believe if somebody told you she was 5'7"? I thought she was like 6'2", bro. She looks massive out there, just kicking the hell out of people. But she eliminated Zelina Vega and Carmella. Number 17 would be Charlotte Flair, the SmackDown Women's Champion. So everybody was hyped for that. My dad's favorite, Charlotte Flair. So he had a, light, a, a lot of time there. He was having fun with it. Number 18 was Ivory, had the IRS theme coming. Did you, do you believe she's over 60 years old? Unbelievable. She came out there. She was eliminated by Rhea Ripley immediately, but it was a crazy turn of events. Number 19 was Brie Bella. Had her mom haircut sporting out there. She was looking solid. Number 20 would be Mickey James. I lost my Mickey James figure. It sucks. Hey, see, it's like $60 now. Unbelievable. But she eliminated Michelle McCool. Number 21 would be Alicia Fox. Number 22 would be Nikki Ash. Bless her soul. I think somebody eliminated Tamina somewhere amongst this madness, but Tamina's no longer in the Rumble. She didn't win. I apologize. Thank God. Number 23 was Summer Rae. She would get eliminated by Natalia. Number 24 was Nikki Bella. Nikki Bella would eliminate Alicia Fox. Number 25 was Sarah Logan. Has a reunion with Liv Morgan. Did not expect that whatsoever, but it was quickly lived because the Bellas would eliminate Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan. So the Riot Squad get taken out in duos there. Liv Morgan was in that thing for a very long time, but unfortunately she, she could not get the job done. I was going hard for her. She could not get it done. I did uh, I did hate that. You know, she had a solid little performance there, but having being eliminated by the Bellas, man, that sucks. Number 26 was everyone's favorite. My favorite woman growing up, and that was Lita. She looked great in her checkerboard gear. Hopefully we get an elite or something of that. She eliminated Mickey James, so F you to Impact. Number 27 was Molly Holly, and Nikki Ash would beat her ass and eliminate her. Number 28, boy, oh boy, you guys know I was marking the hell out. None other. I caught it, Brad. I freaking caught it. Rowdy Ronda Football Rousey in the flesh, man. I popped super hard. My living room popped. We were going crazy. The one thing I wanted in this matchup was Rowdy Rousey to return, and she did. I was marking the hell out, though. That was awesome. My, one of my favorite talents, man. What did she have? instantly takes over the women's division right here. She eliminates Nikki Ash, and while that's happening, Brie eliminates Nikki Bella. Did not see that coming whatsoever. That was a total shock. Ronda Rousey would end up taking out Brie. Number 29 would be Shotzi Blackheart, and the number 30 entrant was kind of underwhelming. I'm gonna be dead honest with you, Brad, and it was Shayna Baszler. So, that did take place. But Ronda eliminates Shotzi. Bianca eliminates Natalia. I put Belair eliminates Natalia, and then Ronda eliminates Natalia. I don't know where that came from, but yeah, that happened. Also, Naomi got eliminated somewhere in there. I don't have who eliminated her, so I do apologize. Charlotte eliminates Rhea and Lita. Then she eliminates Bianca and Shayna. And we're down to the final two, Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair. And at the end of the day, this is a very odd ending right here because they stare each other down. And you can clearly see what's being set up, right? You can clearly see that it's going to be Rowdy and Charlotte. And she goes for her big punt kick to the face. And Ronda just catches her in like a judo throw. And judo throws her out of the ring. And Rowdy Ronda Rousey wins the Women's Royal Rumble. Unbelievable. I think I fantasy booked it the other day. I, I fantasy booked it yesterday. I think I even predicted it this morning. It was like what I really wanted to happen, and it came to fruition, man. It was awesome. So, I'm super happy with the outcome. Now, was the match great? I wouldn't say that. I think you had your moments. I think it was just like your women's rumbles, right? I think you kind of rely on the surprises. You don't put too much investment into it, and you know, it was a lot of kind of lazy-looking wrestling, you know, not a ton of full flesh things. You had some botches. You had some sloppy stuff, but at the end of the day, I did enjoy the rumble. I had fun with it, and Rowdy and Ronda Rousey won it. So, that I mean, that's everything I wanted in it, and she pointed to the sign. She had the baddest on her gear. Hopefully, we get this in elite form with double jointed arms and all the feels. Give me more figures like this. This is one of my favorite Ultimate Editions. It's probably my favorite women's figure in my collection. It's just such a piece to pose around. I love this thing. So the more Ronda Rousey figures we get, the merrier. I hope we get another Ultimate Edition of her. So that'd be awesome. But Ronda Rousey was badass in this thing. She wins the whole thing. I'm super happy with it. Again, I thought I thought we'd see Alexa Bliss. I thought we'd see Bailey. Sasha Banks getting eliminated early was super crazy. But at the end of the day, I was super happy with Ronda Rousey returning. I'm super happy for the women's division as a whole going into WrestleMania season because Rousey is money, man. She is the best in that division right now. So hopefully she can bring it in her singles matches that she has. And I hope that she captures the title at WrestleMania, man. I hope we get a full year out of her and, and, and even longer. I hope she kicks the hell out of everybody, man. Book Rousey. I was super happy with it. Let me know your thoughts on the women's rumble. I was happy with everything that took place, especially the entrance. Next up, guys, we had our Raw Women's Championship match, Becky Lynch versus Dude Drop. A matchup I wasn't really looking forward to, right? Like, I wasn't too emotional emotionally invested in it. You know, I love Becky, but I thought that Dewdrop, you know, it, it is cool 
cool to see her get tossed the bone here, of course, but at the end of the day, I didn't think she would have a shot at winning. She did put on a solid match. I thought it was pretty fun. We had some full creative little moves here. She performed better than I expected. I liked, you know, like the David versus Goliath kind of aspect where in terms of like size difference, like Dewdrop is much bigger than Becky, and I liked how Becky was trying to maneuver around that and make way of that and just the, the avalanche or super like rock bottom-esque finishing move here was dope to end the matchup. I thought that was a great way to end the match, but you know, this match was what it was. You know, it wasn't anything life-changing. It wasn't like a over-the-top spectacular, you know, spectacle of an event, but at the same time, I had fun with what we got, you know, and that's just the end of the day. Becky Lynch did win. I did predict that. I figured that would be the case. I have no issues with that. She's moving on, and I guess we'll see what comes of it and who her next challenger will be, what we get for WrestleMania season, but I think this was a good stop and a good notch on the belt here for Becky as she continues this reign. Next up, guys, was Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley, WWE Championship match. Lots of things up in the air coming into this one, right? I mean, holy hell, who the hell expected this one? I didn't. But this thing was insane, man. Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar. It was a very hard-hitting physical match. I mean, it was the match that I was looking... It was a match that I was uh, very much looking forward to because of the two guys' ability. It's a dream match for a lot of people, a fantasy matchup for a lot of people. And they come out there, man, and they were beating the hell out of each other. German suplexes, F5s, finisher spears all over the place. Hard-hitting, just like all Brock Lesnar matches. So Brock Lesnar goes for the final blow, right? He loads up. He loads up Bobby Lashley, goes for the F5, kicks the ref in the T, takes out the refs. The ref's titties are all over the place. Out of nowhere... Here comes big dog Roman Reigns with the spear on Brock Lesnar. Picks up the WWE, or actually, Paul Heyman hands the WWE Championship off to Roman, and he decks Brock Lesnar in the chaps. One, two, three. Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman help Bobby Lashley defeat Brock Lesnar, and Bobby Lashley is now a two-time WWE Champion. Oh my God in heaven, Brad. Do you know what this means? This means two things. The first thought that came to my brain, was okay well Brock Lesnar's winning the Royal Rumble that, I mean that's I mean that's just obvious now but now I'm in my brain I'm like well dude where the hell does Seth Rollins go now you know where where the hell does that leave Seth Rollins and I don't know where they're going with it very intriguing again after Roman Reigns matchup I was very intrigued now I'm even more intrigued but now I'm worried for the state of the Royal Rumble which we will find out here in just a moment what happened to the Royal Rumble but good God in heaven man they trying to make me lose my damn mind this was a great matchup but now it's very interesting the title picture and the Rumble just got very interesting even though it looks like it could go one way who knows what's going to take place man i'm excited to cover the royal rumble let's get into our next matchup but bobby lash is your new champion and can we talk about the damn white gear man the white gear was so freaking beautiful we have to have a figure of that bill if you're listening i need white gear white and black gear bobby lashley with a wwe title beautiful it was freaking beautiful it was so clean with the white and then you had the black and white accents black and white together is just such beautiful contrast man just such classic and nice and unique looks solid match up, very crazy ending. Didn't expect Roman to interfere whatsoever. It was in the back of my mind, and I saw this playing out. I saw this possibly being a deal. I mentioned it in my fantasy booking. I mentioned it in my predictions, and now here we are. I don't know what the hell's going on, man, but Bobby Lashley's your new champion, and this blew my freaking mind. Give me the white gear, Bobby. Next up, guys, was our mixed tag team match. The It Couple, Miz and Maurice, taking on Edge and Beth Phoenix, and this matchup was what it was. You had some cool moments here and there. The entrances were cool with both of them. Both of them were both in matching gear. I like the Jacksonville Jaguar S gear of Edge and Beth Phoenix. You had the bright sparkle red from Maurice and Miz. And this matchup was what it was. You know, not my favorite match ever. Not like the greatest mixed tag team match ever. But it had its cool moments here and there. Not like a must-watch match. But at the end of the day, Edge does get the victory. Or Edge and Beth both get the victory. I think we can move on from this feud now. I just want to see Edge and AJ Styles at WrestleMania now. That's what I'm, I'm clamoring for. I hope that's what we end up getting. But Edge and Beth Phoenix do defeat the Miz. This matchup was what it was. Again, like I said... Uh, uh, I thought for a moment there, Miz and Maurice had it there. You know, the Skull Crusher finale duo right there with Maurice and Edge with the cool Hurricane Rana. I thought we had some cool moments again. Like I said, if you guys like cool little moments right there with the couples, definitely go check it out. But anything outside of that is kind of eh. I was just mainly looking forward to the Men's Rumble. We were kind of talking throughout with my family and stuff. But Edge and Beth do get the win. I'm glad to see that. And I think that's the right decision here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I tell you. Let's cover the men's Royal Rumble match. 
Starting out at 1 and 2, man, we had AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura. What a great way to start your Rumble, right? I mean, this is a great, perfect start to a Rumble. I literally couldn't think of two guys better to start a Rumble. Not exactly, but, you know, this is this is nice. You got a little Wrestle Kingdom rematch, a little WrestleMania 34 rematch. We won't talk about the match, but, you know, it's there. Also, I noticed that not a lot of champions brought their titles out. Like, nobody, really. I don't think Charlotte did. Shinsuke didn't, I don't think. Damian Priest didn't. I mean, that's probably, that's probably the least of our concerns tonight, boy, I tell you. Entrant number three was... Austin Theory. Didn't expect to see him this early, but he was this early. Number four, we got a little TNA reenactment, man. We had Robert Roode, or Bobby Roode, I call him. I still call him Bobby Roode. F that. But he was quickly eliminated by AJ Styles, so he flew all the way out to St. Louis to get eliminated in five seconds. Pretty pretty piss poor by Robbie Roode. Robbie Roode. Number five was Ridge Holland. Did anyone give a damn? Lord in heaven. AJ Styles ends up eliminating Shinsuke. Also, Shinsuke was in some sick-ass white gear. It was the night of the white gear. Had a lot of white gear, a lot of good stuff going on. That's probably the best part of the night, to be honest with you. No, not for real, but yeah, Shinsuke was rocking a nice white gear, but he got eliminated by AJ Styles. Number six was Montez Ford, and you know what's crazy is my mom, my dad, my brother, we were all over here watching the Rumble with the fam, you know, and everybody, and my mom, after that entire Royal Rumble, she looked at me and said, Montez Ford stood out the most to me in this entire match, and I thought that was awesome, so Montez Ford's a superstar, man, I, I love him, so that's just another testament to that. He looked fantastic tonight, can't wait for his singles run. Number seven was US Champion Damian Priest, he had a sick-ass black and silver gear going on. He was looking pretty good, I'd say. Number eight was Sami Zayn. Number nine was Johnny Knoxville. He came out, got his little pop, you know. It was kind of cool. He had Preston Wee, man. I mean, it was insane. I, I, I kind of popped for it. It was very funny, at least. I know it doesn't really belong in my rumble, but Jesus Christ. It, you know, he got a little pop, you know. He didn't do much. At least he wasn't a big part of the plot, you know. He got in there, he got the hell out. He got thrown the hell out by Sami Zayn, so that was nice. Coming in at number ten is Angelo Dawkins. This figure looks nothing like Angelo Dawkins, man. This figure's way too damn big to be Angelo Dawkins. Number 11 was Omos. He eliminated Angelo Dawkins quick light, so Angelo's in, and he's right back out by Omos. Number 12 is Ricochet. He was looking pretty damn good. It looked like his gear was like Tajiri inspired or something like that. Number 13 was Chad Gable. Now we got some real winners in the ring. We're looking good. Omos eliminated Priest, so Priest got the hell out of there. Then everybody in the ring, Chad Gable grappled everybody up and was like, bro, let's get together and knock out Omos. Let's go ahead and get, get him out of here. So they're all tag teaming. And then out of nowhere, here comes Dominic Mysterio at number 14. And he could have literally grabbed Omos's arm and pulled him out of the ring, but he decides to climb inside the ring to help. And then AJ Styles does a, you know, hits the ropes, comes back, forearms, and eliminates Omos. I just thought that was very odd and weird, but they do eliminate Omos. Just about that time, number 15 would be Trash Corbin. Haven't seen him on the channel in just a moment, but he comes out and eliminates Ricochet and Dominic. So both of those guys are gone. Next up in the Rumble, and actually had a decent showing tonight, would be Dolph Ziggler. Pretty cool gear. I'd, I'd love to see it in figure form. He had like some like camo green or like army green with some tassels and some green neon in his hair. He was looking like a beast, to be honest with you. But Styles would end up eliminating Theory. Number 17 would be Sheamus, and Rich Holland would be eliminated by AJ Styles. Number 18 would be Rick Boogs. Jesus Christ, man. Why Mad Cat Moss and Rick Boogs are even in the league are just god-awful, but he took care of Chad Gable, unfortunately. Mad Cat Moss eliminates AJ Styles, and this is where in the Rumble, man, I just started feeling terrible. We hadn't had really any surprises to this point. We had some good talent getting taken care of, and I was starting to dwindle in my faith. Number 20 would be Matt Riddle. So that lifted my spirits a little bit. I'm like, all right, we got a little Matt Riddle action coming in here. Mad Cat Moss would get eliminated. Number 21 was a nice breath of fresh air as well as Drew McIntyre makes his entrance into the Rumble. I don't think I expected him in the Rumble for whatever reason, but he would eliminate Trash Corbin and Mad Cat Moss. So that was nice to see, to see those idiots thrown out of the ring. 22 would be my man KO. So you know, I was popping hard. He had the red shirt going. He was looking good. 23 would be Rey Mysterio. His gear was sick as hell. He had like white and browns and golds. It was a really sick attire. I'd like to see a figure out of it, to be honest with you. Number 24 was Kofi Kingston, and he comes out and tries to do his spot, but his feet accidentally touch the floor, so he is eliminated, so he eliminates himself. I guess KO gets credit for the elimination, but he does eliminate himself there. His spot does not go all the way through, and Kofi has eliminated himself, so that was pretty bummerific. But no fear, because number 25 is Otis, and I'm pretty sure some of these guys have been thrown out by now, right? 
right? I would imagine some of these guys have been thrown out. Like, I think Sami Zayn at this point was probably gone. I think Montez Ford at this point was probably gone. Sami Zayn's head fell off. Number 26 would be Big E. He had a pretty good showing in this thing. Number 27 is Bad Bunny. Now, Bad Bunny had an incredible match. A way better match with Miz and John Morrison with Damian Priest than we would give him credit for, right? Like, he had a fantastic match, man. But him being one of the big surprises in this matchup sucked the air out of it, man. Like, I like Bad Bunny. Don't get me wrong. I respect what he did in his matches in WWE and what he was able to do as a performer. And he has a good-looking Canadian destroyer, but Jesus Christ, man. He eliminates Sheamus, and then with help from Rey Mysterio, eliminates Dolph Ziggler. And at number 28, probably the biggest shock of the entire Rumble, the uber surprise of the Rumble, the one that everybody was ready for, the one that everybody wanted to see, was Shane Mother Effin McMahon. Shane McMahon. Shane McMahon was the big surprise in this Royal Rumble. At about that time, Rey Mysterio gets eliminated by Otis, and then Shane McMahon throws my boy, Kevin Owens, out of the Rumble. Just like that, all hope's gone. I mean, I, after this, I was like, bro, if Matt Riddle or Randy Orton don't win this damn Royal Rumble, even though I already knew what was going to happen, right? I'm already plotting in my head after the earlier championship match. <sighs> Anyways, number 29, Randall Keith. Otis gets eliminated. Big E gets eliminated. I get eliminated spiritually and emotionally. Number 30. Let's get into it. You already know. I may upload my reactions to this thing because I filmed everything waiting for something amazing. But number 30 is Brock Lesnar. Something we already knew was going to happen, right? I mean, we pretty much knew it was going to happen. I think I even predicted it in my predictions or my freaking fantasy booking. But Lesnar eliminates Orton, Bad Bunny, Riddle, Shane. So we're down to the final two. Drew McIntyre and Brock Lesnar. And I'll tell you what, boy. Brock Lesnar, F5, Drew McIntyre. So it's kind of like a replay of the 2020 Royal Rumble, you know, when nobody was there. Or maybe it was the 2021 Royal Rumble. Whatever it was. I guess it was the 2020 Royal Rumble. Nobody was in the building, right? Or they had all the screens on the freaking thing and Drew McIntyre gets F5'd out this time and he doesn't win. And Brock Lesnar wins the freaking Royal Rumble. Now again, we kind of saw this coming. We saw this coming. But it's just like this Royal Rumble had no substance whatsoever. Like it, it was riddled with like freaking Madcap Moss and freaking Rick Boogs eliminating people and just so like the lineup. I tweeted it earlier in the week. I said this lineup for this Rumble is dog shit. It is not good. There's a lot. There's a lot of people in this Rumble that I could not give two shits about. And they ended up eliminating people. They ended up eliminating people that I did give a shit about. And then the surprises weren't surprises. Bad Bunny and Shane McMahon. They threw those guys out there and expected us to just accept this Royal Rumble. But Brock Lesnar comes out and wins. Like, that's okay. Like, I knew that was gonna happen. I knew it earlier in the night. I literally freaking knew it. I knew this would be the case. If he lost the championship, he'd win the Rumble. One of the, him or the, uh, him or Roman Reigns. And by God, what happened? I just don't know what to say. Like, I understand not having a fiend or something crazy wacky, but Shane McMahon and Bad Bunny, there just wasn't any shocks, man. There wasn't any life in this Rumble. We didn't get a Balor or an RVD or a Ciampa or anything like her just anything shocking anything worth grabbing it was such just a lifeless rumble that literally went by and we we're like oh that's it and then lesnar won to cap everything off I don't know, man. Jesus Christ. It just was not our night. I think a lot of people would agree with it that it was just a very underwhelming Royal Rumble. I don't know if it was the worst Rumble of all time, but it was definitely, definitely, definitely underwhelming to say the mother effing least. Good Lord, man. I don't even know what to say. I don't know where we go from here. I expect to have Bobby Lashley, Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins all tied up in the in the end there. Like, I don't know what sort of conglomerate they're going to go with, who they're going to go with, what superstars gonna go where where the chamber's gonna go or whatever now Brock Lesnar doesn't have to go through the chamber to get there so there's that oh my god in heaven Mmm. I don't even know, man. Let me know what your thoughts are on the Royal Rumble. I mean, I was I was enjoying the show up until this point. I was just really looking forward to the men's rumble because I didn't know what to expect. But then I knew what to expect after the Lesnar match, and then it just it did it, it like the bar was low. The expectations were low, but by God. Anyways, man, that's gonna wrap up my Royal Rumble review. Let me know what your thoughts were overall. I was enjoying the show. I didn't think the women's rumble was great, but it was a lot more exciting and fun than the men's, right? Like the wrestling was better than the men's. And it was cleaner, but the women's was more exciting, I think, as far as surprises and returns and stuff. But I'm getting out of here, man. Let me know your thoughts down below. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at My Damn Toys. And just leave me a comment on what you thought of this show. Christ. Don't cross the line like this rumble.